Oh, it just looks like it's repeating over and over again. It's just tiled over and over again. I wish, oh, I wish there was a node I could throw into Redshift that would just fix this stupid tiling because I like this material. It looks really nice and I want to use it on a big scene, but I don't want it to look like it's repeating like this. If only there was a node I could throw into Redshift that would automatically fix this for me. Has this been you? Well, you're in luck, because today I'm going to show you exactly how to do just that. <laughs> I don't know. Look, I've done this. I did that so many times cracking up about how stupid and dad jokey it is. But you know what? That's that's what you get here on this channel. You get dad jokes. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to fix this stupid tiling, right? Because we have this really cool quick some material. Uh, we can you know zoom in here and look at it we've got our person in here for scale we've got a big landscape we've got some grass right with some nice mud we want this to be over our whole scene now normally you know you do this maybe you mix in another material on top of it to kind of cover it up but it just kind of sucks that there's not just like a random variation node uh they could throw in there like jitter doesn't really quite do it and stuff like that but there is actually a node now that we can use they will actually work and do exactly what we wanted to do so let's go ahead and figure that out so first things first, this is a Quixel material, so the PBR material. This is obviously not, you know, locked into Quixel. This is any PBR material. Uh, so we've got this disgusting old shader graph. We don't want that. So we're going to go over here to Material, Tools, and Convert and Replace with Nodes. There we go. So now we have this nice new easy-to-hook-up node to work with. So we're going to type in C, and we're going to type in OSL. And OSL is Open Shader Language. I believe, if not open source language, I think it's open shader language. Uh, but basically, uh, this node on its own doesn't do anything. You really have to have it a code, uh, basically, to have it do what you want it to do. Uh, so people much smarter than me have created these codes, and you can actually just use them for free. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'll link this below. You can just go to GitHub. And I will link this below in the description because this is, you know, a lot. Uh, but basically what this is, is a giant list of OSLs that are made for Redshift that people have put together. Uh, a lot of them have things that like a JPEG to kind of show off what it's going to do. And then the OSL, which is actual code, which is what you want. And some of these are things that have been kind of put into Redshift over time, like flakes and jitter and stuff like that. But the one we're looking at today may not be one that you thought uh, you might think of when it comes to like tiling or random tile because there are a few there is texture no tile which you know is going to do exactly what you want this is going to work well it comes with all these controls and you can see this is a uv map and it just kind of blends it and changes it and shakes it all up which is really nice right it's perfect but we don't really want that uh, much chaos with this we just want it to kind of rotate up a bunch more so there's one that you can use and i'll show you how to use all of these here in a minute basically you just load them in to the osl shader uh, and then there's ones that are uh there's another one that's called uv transform uh that's pretty much like the same kind of thing it just kind of helps break up patterns uh basically uh it just like rotates things and breaks up the pattern a little more step wise but what we're going to do is we're going to use hex coordinate hex tile coordinates okay so you can see here we've got this pattern lava here but when hex tiles on it's not pattern so how do we use this well we just go to the hex tile coordinates osl we hit copy right here these two squares you can also download it if you want and load it in that way but we've just copied that and so we're going to come in here hit control a delete control v and just hit load and there it goes you see it says compiled successfully and it has changed this into hex tile coordinates. Very cool. So now in order to use this, we just grab that. And let's just turn off our IPR so we can do like a grand reveal. We plug this UV offset, okay, into each texture map that you have. Now, if someone out there knows how to bulk add a node into multiple texture maps, let me know because I hate doing this. Uh, UV remap offset. And then down to here. UV remap offset and down to here UV remap offset okay there we go and now when we hit render notice our very tiling repeating floor da -da 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 -da. perfect chaos <laughs> uh, yeah so so good 
Uh, so good. Now, it doesn't change it in the viewport, but you can see that it does, in fact, change it here. Now, the only issue is sometimes displacement gets a little wonky, so we're going to try to fix that. But there you go. Like, you have the ability to um, change different parameters of this uh, beyond just that. But, like, by default, super good. We don't have any hard lines. Now, it's important to know that you need a tiling material to do this. A Sorry, a seamless material. That way you don't have like hard edges and stuff. And we can kind of like up the blend amount, which is just kind of feather them through each other a little bit more, which might just help if you ever saw any weird hard edges or anything. Um, like if we take this off, you might get some hard edges, but I doubt it with this material. But you can kind of blend things in a little more. It's kind of like feathering. Think of like each of these squares that you're putting on there with this texture. You're feathering the edges and rotating them all like this. So they're all just kind of like, which creates this really organic, non-repetitive looking floor. And this works beyond just landscapes. You can put this on like, you know, if you just want to do this on a scratch map or something on an object to get a bunch of little micro scratches, uh, you can do that. So you can come in here and you can add some noise, which if you have like hard edges, this will like break up the edges uh, to add some noise across that and how it's applied. You can just change the seed where obviously it will just change the pattern and the way it's created, which is super cool. And we also can adjust the amount that's rotated. So if we want it to go all the way up to 360, we can do that. We can change the rotation steps, which is going to make it like click, click, click like that. We'll do 180 though. I think all the default settings are really good. Now, random scale is one that I don't know that you need to, to mess with too much when it comes to like Quixel materials like this, because obviously, as you see, when we scale these up, it doesn't look very good, right? So maybe we'll take that one all the way down to just off. So we don't have that uh, scaling anymore, but it does help to have it on sometimes like maybe a little bit, like 0.1, just because when things don't line up just quite right, it does help to have that little overlap with, with the blending. Okay. So let's take a look at getting this to work with something with a little more displacement. So I've got my hex tile hooked up here to a rocky ground here. And I've got it set to default. So one thing I've done is I want to go in here to displace a map and make sure that's set to raw. Okay. And then instead of here, I want to change this to negative 0.5 and this to 0.5 for so the minimum range and the maximum range. So that's going to keep the same level of displacement, but uh, bring it back down a little bit. So rather than lifting everything up, it's going to do it like that. So it'll just kind of keep our plane kind of where it is, which is really important for ground planes. Now, the first thing I did is I've taken my texture here. Instead of tiling it 40 times here, we're actually just going to do it inside of the hex here. And we're going to say grid repetitions. We're going to say like 30. And that's going to tile it 30 times, basically. Refresh. We're having to refresh every time because of the tessellation and the displacement. It's being weird right now. Um, but you just got to spam that refresh. It's mainly on large objects and stuff that you get that happening. But you can see it works fairly well. Our displacement is actually on our rocks and stuff. It is tiling that. But we have these weird things in between here. So what that is, is if you can tell, if we take our... Um, you can see kind of has these lines here. If we take our blend amount inside of our OSL shader and take it down to zero we're going to see that a little clearer what it is. And basically it's the edges of our hex tiles and how it's pattern patterning our things. You can see we kind of create those edges because we're getting that displacement on the edge there. So one thing you can do is you know, take the blend amount all the way down, grab our displacement map here, double click, copy, control C, and inside the height map here, paste that here. And that's going to help clean that up just a little bit. It's not going to make it perfect. But that's much better, right? Less distracting, much better, and it shouldn't displace. So what I would say to do, rather than trying to sit here and finagle and fix this forever, is keep this really low, like 0.01. Keep our height at like 0.5, or maybe just 1 actually is fine. And what I would say to do is if you're doing a big scene with this and you need a tight shot with your displacement to work properly and be really accurate, make another plane that's just that. So like just basically, you know, rather than having your big ground, think of it like a movie set. So you'd have like 
filler space that's not as like detailed right and then you have like the stuff that's in focus and that's like really nice and detailed so you just put another plane down like right there with the displacement without the hex tile and stuff so you have that looking really good but there we go that's you know i mean that's pretty good for the fact that i mean we're displacing a huge material um we can come in here and still adjust it here if we really wanted to jack up uh, and be just very clearly displaced and see we've got all those gray lines just refresh until they're gone then more came out that time just refresh again i don't understand why it's happening there we go now they're all gone uh we can grab our sun and maybe make it a little later in the day so we have like a more of a, a longer shadow and that's really going to highlight those displacements so you can see it is working the tiling is flawless it's great Everything looks really good. So, but you can see here, see how it's like this, where it kind of fades off and doesn't look as displaced back there. I'm 99% sure that's what Screen Space Adaptive is doing. Basically, it creates like a total amount. Um, basically, it's like we're going to only add enough geometry where I think I need it versus across evenly across the whole thing. So. We're not going to displace as much out there, but um, we can turn this off. And now we're going to get it more evenly dispersed all the way throughout. So if you notice that uh, happening, there's that. But one thing you may notice is you do lose a little detail because kind of what it does is kind of like, um, if you know anything about VR and screens like that, it's like pixel density kind of a thing so it's subdividing where it thinks you're going to see it the most and anywhere where it's like i don't really need to subdivide up over there because you're not going to tell it's going to do that so if you zoom in here we're going to see our our we've lost a lot of detail because we're not screen space adaptive where as we turn this on it's going to bring all that detail into more condensed into where we're looking at right here right so pretty cool so again very very cool tool to use just some issues with displacement but honestly if you're using displacement on like like that small a detail thing i really think you can you could get away with you could get away with it i think you'd be fine because you're going to cover this up with grass and stuff you should never just use um just one material for all your whole floor right you should put grass and more rocks and stuff in on top of this maybe mix in another material on top but I mean, we were able to tile something and make it not tile looking, which is huge. So thank you to all of you who create the OSLs, um, especially this hex tile one, which was made by Edward and Emmick. Uh, so thank you all so much. It's fantastic. A practical real-time hex tiling by Mort. Mort and Mickelson. Yes, thanks, Morton and Mick. And Edward, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, the Mind and Motion Workshop is available now. Check it out, as well as all my other stuff on Gumroad. We've got lots of cool tuts and stuff coming up. Um, so be sure to ring that bell, subscribe and like, and all that jazz. If you've watched a YouTube video before, you know it helps the channel. Okay, see you next time. Some of you might be wondering what what this is. This is a kitty cat. Uh, my do my daughter got it for her birthday uh, party, and uh, the thing is, is that was since she said she she wanted to put it right there, so I said okay. Um, <laughs> but she uh, the thing is, is that was three months ago, and it's still going strong, and I can't bring myself to put it down. So it's just kind of been moving around our house <laughs> as she pleases. But all right, cool. See y'all next time.